Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean Samet, I'm a pro horror artist from the UK and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. In this video tutorial, I'll be sharing the reasons why I think selective color is one of the absolute best color processing tools in Photoshop. I'll show you how to create the adjustment, use it in your photo manipulation workflow and give some visual examples of the tool in action. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel, we specialize in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out five videos a week. Let's roll the video, enjoy. So I wanted to create this tutorial today because selective color is an adjustment that I use in pretty much every single project I do. So when I'm doing the longer form tutorials, if I'm using selective color in the tutorial, I'd like to be able to link back to this video so you guys can look more into it if you're not already familiar. So what I have on screen right now is a book cover project that I worked on last year. It's a um, Vitruvian Man homage. And I'm gonna use this as a demo and we're gonna take a look at selective color in action on this piece and a couple of other artworks as well. So first off, selective color is an image adjustment you can access image adjustments via image adjustments and then choosing selective color i'm going to put that on a layer where i can access those options image adjustments and then selective color now if you were to access this panel via image adjustments anything that you do here would be destructive and applied directly to the pixels now you'll hear me saying and other people on the PM team that it's not really worth doing destructive editing because we have another option which is way better and that's accessing the selective color via the adjustments. So we're at the top of the layer stack. We go adjustment drop down here and select selective color. And here you can see the dialog box which allows you to tweak the values now, everybody has a different setup with their workspace. Me, I like to have a super minimal workspace. I personally don't like to have color wheels or swatches. I like to have my toolbar to the left and I like to have a skinny row of options here. This, I've just pulled every tool that I frequently use into there. So there's maximum screen real estate. Everyone on the PM team does things a little bit different so if your workspace looks different to mine that's absolutely fine i'm going to click on the layer stack and at the top here you can see the adjustment layer because it's all white everything is visible and if i were to invert that to black command and i that would make everything invisible white shows black hides so i'm going to double click on there i'll pull this out the properties of this Okay, so selective color, what does it do? Selective color allows you to tweak the color values of any particular tone, shade, or color. So the default, the colors are set to neutrals. And when I pull these sliders, it will reduce or increase the amount of each color in the image. So if I pull back cyan, it'll remove cyan and give it a red tone. If I push it upwards, it'll push the cyans. And if I do the same with magenta, it'll be green and then up to magenta. Yellow, it'll give you a, a rich deep blue. And then if you push it forward, it'll go to yellow. And black is the kind of the, the brightness. Because it's set on neutrals, this is like a, what we call a global effect. So it will do it to the whole image. And this is good for when you finish your work and you want to do post-processing global processing and you just want to tweak the colors this will really easily allow you to switch the values exactly as you need them you can you don't have to use the sliders you can enter numerical values into these boxes here really helpful if you're not so nifty with the mouse so that's global processing with selective color you can also uh, go to whites and this is a, a favorite of mine if you wanted to change the tone of the lights here i pull the cyan back you can see it going to a, a peachy red tone if i push it forward 
it will give it a matrixy cool blue tone with magenta you pull it left you can make only the whites go to a tone of green yellow you can tweak those values as well so the reason why i like selective color so much is because it gives you such a, a huge amount of control over the different color values in the piece so i'm just going to leave those whites active for now i'm going to click down and i'm going to go to blacks and this is the inverse to whites any blacks or dark tones all of these slider values that are tweaked now will only tweak the darks and the blacks so i'm going to pull the cyan back now this is a go-to of, of mine if i want to go for an aged or 80s or sepia tone because the we're trying to replicate printed matter sometimes the colors get a bit bleached out and, and go a more reddish hue as opposed to a rich dark hue so going on to blacks and pulling back the cyan is an instant aging effect and as opposed to using any other kind of filter you have 100 percent full control on the color tone for those darks so i'll just do it a little bit more i won't go for blues i'll just keep the yellow to zero so that's neutrals whites and blacks you can also go in on the other tones if you own if you had an image that was very blue heavy you could jump in and tweak only the blues there's a lot of freedom with using this tool i'm going to click on the layer stack i'm going to hide and show so that in itself is very subtle but sometimes you only need a subtle edit you don't need to use a bazooka so we have a very complex looking layer stack here i'm going to show you some other ways that this can be used this group here is global processing and this was the finishing touch that i did to the artwork after the um the piece was finished I'm just going to zoom in a touch here i'm going to hide the global processing and there you can see the, the sharpening and the kind of oil paint effects that i've applied to this i'll include a link in the description if you'd like to watch my post processing technique that i like to use for finishing off these sharp photographic images so i'm going to hide the global processing i'm going to hide the gradient map and we're going to dig through and see where the selective color has been used so we've got one here i'm going to command and click on the layer icon and there you can see because of the layer mask white is visible black is invisible and this selective color is applied only to the figure now because it's an adjustment layer at any time i can go back click on the icon and here let's have a look we've got blacks we've got neutrals and for this one it was the neutrals i got in there and messed about i wonder if i messed about with the yellows because this is a very yellow heavy stock image okay so it looked like most of the action was happening within neutrals so at any time if you want to apply the selective color to only one region you create a selection based on that region and then go adjustment layer selective color and your adjustment pops up and allows you to selectively apply it only to that object so i'm just going to delete that one there so that's a demo of the selective color in action you can either have the selective color as global with nothing applied to the layer mask or you can selectively apply it to one particular element or image within the composite so that's a look at the vitruvian man here's another one and there's no layers intact but what i will do is show you how we can tweak only the blues uh, as we mentioned in the demo before so we've got the colors drop down we're going to go for hmm, let's go for cyan's and because this is a very cyan heavy piece i'm going to pull the cyan's back here and you can see it's taking the vibrancy out and, and pushing it more towards um a reddish peachy hue let's have a go with the magenta we'll, we'll pull that back and we see we're getting more into green territory here we can do the same with the yellows push the yellows and then we'll dip in to the blues as well we'll get rid of some of them and you can see the values of everything changing now it's pulling out a lot of greens on the side here 
So let's go to greens and see if we can selectively apply them. We'll take the cyan out. We'll push the magenta. We'll take the yellow out. And this will change the value of the greens. With the black slider, that's not really doing anything at the moment. But you can see there's so much that you can do by selectively tweaking every single color value and you can amend those values to get exactly the look that you require for your piece so i'm going to delete that one there and we'll have a look at another piece so again another book cover that's what i do for a living i illustrate horror book covers and sometimes sci-fi and this one is kind of a, a moody carnival piece we're going to hide the global processing and i'll just show you before and after on the global processing on this to see the finish there's a bit of grain there's a bit of an oil paint process so i'm going to hide the global processing i'm going to dig through and see the selective color in action so on the layer stack i can see i've got a selective color here if i command and click the layer mask you can see that i only wanted the selective color to be applied to this figure if i double click the adjustment thumbnail here you can see if I go to neutrals, which is normally my go-to, the cyans have been tweaked, magenta's gone up a touch, so has the yellow. I'm wondering if I did anything to the blacks, did I do anything to the whites? Nope, it was mainly neutrals where all the action was happening. So I'm going to hide this um, selective colour adjustment now, just so you can see the before and after. So before was the photographic original of the stock image, and because the color tones of this girl, the warm orangey tones of the scene, it, it needed to be brought together with the overall composition. So that selective color adjustment layer was applied. So those tones matched the rest of the scene, the ambient lighting. For this one, let's have a look. Okay, at the top here, once again, we've got all of the global processing. I'll just show you now before and after with the global processing. So this is a finishing touch done after the work is finished. You can see it very sharp, very photographic. I hide that and you can see the original stock photography. For this piece, there is a global selective color in play. So I'm gonna hide that and then show that. You can see there's probably something done to the blacks here, but we'll dip in there and see what's going on. It's been a while since I've done these images. Let's take a look at those dark tones. So, selective color, we've clicked the layer icon. I've got the properties up here. So I'm on neutrals, the cyan's been pulled back, the magenta, the yellow. Uh, I'll see if anything's happened with the blacks here. So, yep, I knew that'd be the case. The cyan, I'm gonna push that to the front. You can see there's a, a, a dark blue hue there. And it wasn't right for the composite scene because of the lighting coming from below so that was just pulled back a touch just to give it a little bit of a retro poster feel which is a really nice finishing touch we've got neutrals there we'll take a look at the whites okay so quite a lot of actions going on with the whites here the cyan was pushed up the magenta was pulled back the yellow was pulled back and the light tones have, have been tweaked accordingly now the final demo that I'm going to show you is the actual Siberian incident uh, with all of the layers intact. So we've got the type there, we've got grunge, we've got global processing once again, hide and show that. I'm going to hide that for now and we're going to click on this selective color which is a bit of a global one and you can see the massive difference. Before the tones were quite murky and dark and using just one selective color adjustment layer we've gone for a more icy looking aesthetic to match the uh, deep freeze frosty vibe of that we needed for this particular artwork so that's my overview of my all-time favorite photoshop color processing tool do you use selective color in your work if you do drop me a comment below i'd love to hear about how you use it but that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed I'll catch you at the next video. See you then.